Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Deck Sim live stream today. It's uh, the 13th of June, 2023. Three minutes past four in the afternoon here in the United Kingdom. It's about 28 degrees outside my office. So hot. I'm barely alive. <laughs> Hope you're all doing well. Uh, back in Microsoft Flight Simulator for another uh, stream in the uh, Just Flight BA146. I think it's been about a year since we've last flown this aircraft. I got it all updated and installed. I had a massive update uh, last month. New EFB, new features, FPS improvements. It's running super smooth on my rig. Uh, today we are flying between uh, Bern here in Switzerland. We've got the lovely Orbex scenery installed. Uh, very short runway for departure as well. So we're using a high flap setting. Uh, for takeoff, we'll be flying. We've been there before the 146, but not in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We did it in X Plane. We're going to do it again in the Microsoft Flight Simulator because Orbex updated London City, I think, uh, a month or two ago. It's got the brand new taxiway looking really nice, and everyone loves flying into London City. And this is the aircraft to do it, the 146, with the uh, six degree steep approach, twice as steep as a conventional ILS. Uh, Fly time around one hour 25 minutes, live time, live weather. Good fun to be streaming again. Uh, who have we got here in chat today? Domino Mosina, uh, are five APUs enough to get this plane uh, flying from here? <laughs> they are incredibly uh, underpowered, these engines. This aircraft has very poor performance in the climb. We're cruising at 32,000 feet today. Good luck getting up there. We'll see how we get on. Uh, two tons, 28 degrees, not sympathetic. It was 39 degrees locally. Yes, I can believe it, but houses in the UK are designed to keep the cold out and not the heat. And that's why it's so hot in here. I don't have aircon. In fact, I've got a fan on behind me. I hope you can't hear it. But it's on the oscillation of my jacks down here. Sleepy as well. We had for a long walk this morning before it got too hot. I'll show you him later on Yoga Cam. Um, Elliot Smith says, my second favourite aircraft. Great to see it back on the stream. It's been a long time since we've flown it. Hugo Vane's, oh yeah, can't wait for some stolops. Absolutely. Now, we're going to be using the default FMC today. I know we don't like using it on this channel. And I think just flight are updating it to have a, uh, a real world FMC that was in this aircraft, but it hasn't been updated yet. It's just to get into London City and out of here. It's all RNAV based. Can't really do it conventionally as well. But we have to do all our descent calculations manually today. Uh, catching two streams in a week. One with my favourite aircraft too. Excellent change French. I don't know if I've read that already, but uh, if I didn't uh, thanks for commenting. David Washburn says, greeting stupid o'clock here in Brisbane. Yeah, my goodness. Well, we had fun on Sunday. We crossed the ditch. Um, must be getting very early in the morning for you there. Um, I thought the 146 ceiling was 29,000, 26,000 in ICP. It's good. Apparently, according to the manual, it's 30, I think it's 36, uh, but I think you've got to be completely empty. Uh, let me have a quick look at the uh, the, the checklist here, the maximum cruise. Uh, oh, I, well, I, I think it can go, as long as it's empty, but yeah, it, it will struggle up at 32,000 feet today. Um, I like the WTFMC. Is that the default one, Rab H, I think? Oh, oh yeah, 35,000 feet. Yeah, that sounds about realistic. But yeah, we're, it's because it's a short flight. We don't have a full tank of fuel. Uh, anyway, here we are. Look, you can see the Alps in the distance here. As I said, this is uh, Payware Orbex scenery. It does look very, very nice indeed. Uh, burn here. Very tiny apron. You can only really fit aircraft like the 146 in or your Dash 8s or your ATRs. Uh, the runway is only about 1,700 metres long as well. You barely get a 737 in and out here. But yeah, it's typical Orbex scenery. Very high quality. I think the London City one has uh, even detailed interiors. Look, we have a lady waiting to catch... <laughs> Yes, she's looking lustfully towards Jim, I think, and uh, he's suspicious of her behaviour. But yeah, I love these little touches here, but you can see very nicely uh, positioned. This is the Alpaca Airways BAE-146, the APU, uh, the uh, ground power connected already. Such a stumpy looking thing. Look at the wing anhedral as well. Um, we've got the uh, uh, Baby 30, 4 engines 40, as the GPU connected. The 30. Massively strong gear, very highly detailed this aircraft. Thank you very much, Ken Upkey, for the six euros, buddy. What have you got to say here? Uh oh. Four engines, two wings, and one awesome captain. <laughs> Coffee is ready, and so am I. That's very Smiley face. Cheers, Kaponki. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you very much for your we donation. Must, uh, have you enjoy your must. coffee. Of Massive thanks to Jamlin, must. who made this some time ago for the aircraft. We've got butter or bust uh, here in the uh, rear of the uh, speed brake that opens up here. Absolutely awesome. This thing is, if you get high, no problem at all. You just opened up at this in flight, and you come straight down there. Excellent. Right. I've not done anything except open the doors. The aircraft's completely cold and dark. I think I pre-fueled it. The, uh, the fuel and the passengers, that was it. And in we go. Oh, uh, there we go. Let me uh, smoothly transition. Oh, you could argue I've done that before. Uh, right then. Uh, itch it and scratch it. Thanks for 43 pubs as a member. Uh, over, uh, oh my goodness me. Six, over three years as a member. That's incredible. Almost four. Thank you very much for your continued support for the entire time there. That was during pre-COVID you became a member so thank you very much indeed for your continued support for the entire time, really appreciate it buddy thank you, um, 
So, uh, let me just turn the music down here, and uh, may I recommend an excellent checklist I stumbled upon. I like to follow real world checklists. Now, the Just Like 146 comes with a very comprehensive manual, 267 pages, really detailed, going all into the technical aspects of the aircraft as well, supplementary procedures to graphs and tables, and also has like a little tutorial flight for you to try out when you first install it with a procedure. Now, I've been following that every time I fly that aircraft, uh, but uh, here is the one. 46 checklist I found online from the flightsim.io website by PHBKO. It's great. It just shows you where to look to find the switch. Uh, it's all bracketed here. It just gets the aircraft configured, makes sure everything is done uh, correctly. So I'd recommend downloading this. Downloading this. It's completely free to download. Uh, so no problems at all there. Uh, right, that's that done. Let me close that here. And um, we'll go from there. Um, is this the A300 said job? No, a little, little shorter, a little smaller. Uh, Airliner World did a big piece on this add-on in the latest edition. Yes, yeah, someone uh, just like tweeted about that. I think it was well respected, but it, it is an excellent add-on. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Six, 50, 60 quid. It's, it's you know, pricey, but it's a very, very detailed, uh, high quality. It flies really nicely as well. Actually, I like how it handles um, compared to some of the other aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Taxiing along as well. Uh, really nice indeed. Uh, right, let's get some electrical power onto the aircraft. Let me just uh, turn the music off here for a second because I love it every time you, you power it up here. It makes this ding sound like a shop door bell. <laughs> on to collect the groceries like it's 1955. Uh, right, batteries on. Let's get the external power connected which is here. There we are. External power's on. Lots of noise. Nav lights are to high intensity. It's the overhead panel off one of the Apollo missions. Um, so many switches. So nav lights are in high... Ah! <laughs> I keep forgetting. Jim has spawned. I just saw the little queef there right in the corner of my eye whilst I was looking at the overhead panel. Jim, you continue to sit there doing absolutely nothing. Uh, so battery on, nav lights are on, no smoking signs can go on. Cabin emergency lighting to arm. Brake selector switches to yellow, but we do have the chocks installed. So the parking brake is set with yellow. Uh, autopilot as uh, your damper master switches can come on. Uh, avionics master switches can come on. That's turned on my radio tuning panel. Uh, anti skid can come on. Let's make sure I don't skip anything out here. Yellow and green lift spoilers. Come on, and the bus tie AC and DC can come on. Where is that bus? I think that's down here somewhere. It's just finding. The problem is, is trying to find the switches half the time is what's the problem here. Uh, bus, bus, bus tie electrics are up here. I think no, they're down there. Uh, right here we are. So bus tie auto static inverter and static generator on, galley switch on, so they can start making everyone coffee, so galley switch is on, generator 1 and 4 off, which is over here, there are the hydraulics, where's the generator switches for the engines, there they are, uh, they are already off, APU generator on, and we will start the APU now as well, so we turn on the left inner fuel pump for the APU, APU master switch to start, Oh no, that's engine start, sorry, APU start, and that automatically starts the APU straight, straight away. Monitor APU, TGT, and RPM, and if you go back here, you should be able to hear it. Uh, spool up here. Now, this is all open because I don't have any hydraulics on at the moment. I think once you turn the hydraulics, everything clamps up and closes. Um, here, the elevator, you don't actually directly control, you move, it's a... Um, uh, what do you call these? Control tabs. So the elevator is free moving, so in the airflow, so when you move your elevator in pitch, it's moving the tab, which moves the entire elevator. It's pretty popular on aircraft like this, or GA aircraft as well. Uh, Rubbage just thought did an awesome job on the 146. Absolutely, it's a very good aircraft. I think they're making the Avro as well, which would be pretty cool when that comes out too. Uh, the avionics master switch also turns on your desktop radio panel. That's correct, are we, Mitch? I'll show you very quickly. Um, let me just jump here into the cockpit. Um... What's happened here? Uh, where's the avionics master switch here? I probably, I, you probably understand what I'm talking about. But you see, if I turn on my yoke cam, there we are. So let me turn on the avionics master switch. If you watch this, look. There you go, look. It powers up the, the radio tuning panel, which is uh, pretty cool. Whilst I've got yoke cam in my hand, would you like to see down below? He's fast asleep, look. He, when you talk, 
He just he just sleeps. Oh, I think I've, I think I've got his attention. He's probably wondering what on earth is that. But yeah, we. Were, oh, oh, hello, buddy. Oh, the light. <laughs> oh, we didn't like the light. Oh, okay. Very good. So, uh, yoke cam slash jack cam is always good to go. Let me just make sure this is all set up ready. Uh, I'm sporting shorts today. You can see my knobbly knees in the corner. I think. That's a good position there for Yoke Cam. Um, so yeah, there we are. That's uh, what I mean by the avionics blaster switch study on the radio tuning panel. Uh, right, we'll get the APU air on. And pack 1 and 2 on as well. Uh, we said to use pack 1 or 2. Pack 1 on odd day, pack 2 on an even day. Well, that's getting some nice conditioned air into the cabin at least. Right, so we've sort of configured initially everything we need to do there. Cockpit lighting is set. Master warning system. So this has three positions, you push it into test, that illuminates this system, and then you pull it out to test all the lights, I think. Uh, there we go. So you can see everything binging and bonging, I don't think there's anything going on the overhead panel, but there's the master warning system, everything that could potentially go wrong. I thought that said eject, no it says elect, goodness knows what elect means, but eject I'd be quite concerned. Uh, right, put it in the mid position, reset the master caution, fire. Warnings. Um, yes, uh, yes. Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. Now, I'm not one of these streamers who instantly makes a video uh, the, the second so it comes out. I'm not that. I don't like doing that sort of content. I'm sort of just want to have fun with you guys flying all the different great aircraft available. But I did make a. I did tweet about it. It's very. I think it caught everyone off by guard. I don't think anyone realised it was coming out. It certainly looks exciting. Um, what's going to happen? Who knows? I think it will work, won't it? Keep up the great work. Oh. oh, thank you. I don't even know who that was. Uh, Remo Van Zigger, thank you very much. It doesn't even come up on my, my Streamlabs thing, but thank you very much, well. Remo Van Zigger, for your uh, donation there directly via uh, Streamlabs. So appreciate that. And uh, I, I'll do my best to keep up the great work. I don't know why that's not came, come up on my mini feed at all, but thank you very much for your, your donation. I do what I can. Uh, but yeah, um, Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. What's it going to bring? Essentially... It's great news. I think that they've already sort of nipped on the bud. A lot of people are worried that everyone's add-ons that you've bought for Microsoft Flight Simulator won't be compatible. So it's great from what they've said that it will be compatible. But that re one of the, my moderators brought up a really good question. Okay, well that's great that it brings up uh, the ability to install older aircraft. But then what's really the point of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024? If all the old aircraft work in Microsoft Flight Simulator looks pretty good to me. What does 2024 have to offer that 2020 won't? Um, I know that the <laughs> preview talked about talking about um, the career mode, and that's great. I, you know, I'd have loved a career mode you know, when I was playing at a, at a younger age. But I think it's it's really catering. I have to. Uh, it's it's a cater for the Xbox guys, guys. Uh, you think about the core user base of Microsoft Flight Simulator. We love uh, study level aircraft on this channel, flying complex aircraft. But the core user base is, is Xbox users, and this is going to give the ability to fly. You know, helicopters and things like that on your Xbox and have a bit of fun. That, that, that's essentially what they're catering for. Uh, but yeah, uh, you won't see me making any videos on it or, or, or anything to sort of garnish opinion. I, I tweeted about it because I thought it'd be a nice discussion topic. We'll probably talk about it a bit more today. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's purely Microsoft a company need to make money. And uh, you know, previously they released a sim every two or three years back then but there's also now a hell of a lot more developers third party add-ons and things like that uh, a lot of people live off their businesses doing that you think about microsoft flights of 2002 2004 you had some big names back then like pmdg i think just fly around there but you think of all the little devs now around but uh, anyway let's let's carry on with the setup we'll talk about it in the cruise we do have a bit of time for this flight uh right master warning system i tested ground test performed dc pump on so that's over this side here uh dc pump on ac pump to hold on dc pump on check for rising yellow hydraulic system uh yes yellow we have quantity there where's the uh maybe i have to turn the ptu on So there we are. So I think you just have to make sure that we're pressure for both the hydraulic systems. It's just a test at this stage. And then we turn off the DC pump. AC pump stays on. And then PTU comes off. So AC, oh sorry, AC pump off as well. There we are. So it's just to check the hydraulics, the pressurization. And I think, look, you can see it's clamped shut the speed brake now as well. Um, now, I've never understood this in the 146, but for engine start, 
and pre-flight. You turn on engine anti-ice, then you turn it off if not required for takeoff, but it is on for engine start. Uh, flight deck emergency lighting can come to the arm position. Uh, faster belt belts can come on. Uh, your damper one and two on, which is down here. Uh, oxygen main valve open, just to check the hydraulic system. Looking at Jim's chest here. Um, I think it's just to make sure we have sufficient oxygen supply. Uh, it's just in the yellow band, that's concerning, but who, who, who cares? Um, <laughs> if I oxygen regulated test supply, doors are open. We started boarding. We've checked the hydraulic pressure. It's over 2,500 PSI for yellow, which it is. Thrust levers in the fuel off. Hydraulics off for now. Center tank transfer switch auto. Uh, Pressurization mode selector auto. Set the cruise altitude. So we're going to be cruising at. Well, I've, no, we're cruising at 32,000 feet, but I think it's maximum 8 psi, or maximum 8,000 feet cabin altitude, because I can't set it any higher. And we'll just set the Q&H here, which is 1009. We'll show you the flight plan and everything shortly, guys. 1009. I think I had to push that. There we are, now we can set 1009. Pull. There we go. So, pressurization system set, fuel quantity verify, we'll do that shortly. Flight data recorder's on, flight check there and now it's uh, loading up the FMC and taking performance calculators as well so I'll just show you where we are geographically uh, we are in Switzerland we'll be taking off runway 32 here awesome departure for you it's gonna be a 270 degree R nav turn to ZB 100 then to Ramok then a 90 degree turn here that's just to get some altitude uh, so we can climb above the, the terrain here and then we'll be routing northwest sort of towards Roland Plom uh, east of Paris Overhead, uh, Schiphol, Belgium, across the English Channel, and then we travel up the Thames Estuary up to London City. As I said, one hour, 25 minutes. We'll brief the taxi shortly and look at their brand new EFB. I'm sure some of you guys have seen this already. It's really nice. You've got the aircraft here. Um, I've already done that. You've got uh, panel states. This is the, what you're used to. I've obviously pre -fuel, I pre fueled the aircraft prior to the stream. Uh, here's the operational flight plan let me just find the PDF document here um, so 5.3 tons burns about 2.2 tons now I've taken an extra 30 minutes of fuel guys is 6.3 tons and you can see that's um, loaded up in the tax tax here 6.3 uh, 6 so you can see the APs already used a little bit of fuel so fuels all done um, you press home we've got Navigraph integration now which is excellent just like with the Phoenix a320 so charts you can star them you can then pre-select them really really nice and uh, you can see your sim brief operational flight plan raw all the better it reads your alternates departure and origin uh, uh, origin destination sorry a quick summary as well and obviously I'm logged in as myself uh, and that's yeah oh this is really nice a little top of the set calculator as well uh, yeah Schiphol well yeah it's about I didn't mean Schiphol in Belgium I'm sort of we're flying to the west of Schiphol are we Amsterdam Belgium but I don't know the exact routine blah 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 um, so yeah this is really useful because there's no VNAV in this well it does have VNAV but I don't know how it actually works with, with this default FMC but you can actually calculate um, your tar target top of descent point and your rate of descent as well which is pretty cool. I've got my sync system all set up as well so the way I've turned on yoke cam here the way you control the pitch in this aircraft is you gauge the autopilot and you see this button here on my joystick probably won't work because I've got the flight directors off here but you can hear that clicking sound that is the sync feature so what happens is you, you, you when the autopilot is engaged to change your rate of descent you hold this button down you then pitch to your target vertical speed and then you you, know, you let go of the button and it holds the attitude. It's a really, really neat feature on the 146. Um, failures turned on. Uh, maybe we'll look here. They've got a kind of comprehensive failure system imported into this now, haven't they? Uh, aircraft. Where is it? I've seen it here already. Uh, no, that's settings. Uh, there you go. Look at this. There's lots of failures. Uh, random. I, I'm not doing it. I might do another stream where we put on random failures uh, and see how we get on, but not today. In fact, I'm going to press fix all. Uh, we'll see. I know you guys love me. Love a, a failure stream. Not today. Uh, yes, that's it. Sync disengages the autopilot momentarily. I, that's it, Rabbit. Yeah, I see the autopilot light comes off. Um, right, so for takeoff performance, so let's actually do the routing. Oh no, it actually wants me to do the take performance calculations now. So we use this TMS system, thrust, thrust management system, I can't remember what the acronym is. But we'll power it up first, 
it's, you don't have auto throttle on this, but this will fine tune your thrust setting for you. Um, so press that on, perform the test. So it's doing all of its things here. Uh, yes, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, so that's done. Set the outside air temperature, which is what is it here? Uh, I can use this here, can't I? Metal. So live when it's 26 degrees here in Bern. So 26 degrees. Um, take off TMS to arm the system. Uh, set climb temperature, target TMS. So we have this, what is it, I've got my notes here, 820 is the default, that's fine. Uh, so N1 bug set TMS value, which we've done, so 89.7, which is full thrust based off 26 degrees. Take off speeds, verify. Now what you have to do is simply click this and watch the bugs. There you go, and it sets all of the target N1s for t the TMS system and the EGT as well. 882, that seems a bit hot. Uh, well, we'll set about 89%. And what this does, it'll just fine tune the thrust levers to ensure everything's set. The thrust modulation system, thank you, Rab H. So I think that's all done. Um, and we're going to be using for departure not the default flap setting of. Uh, flap 10. We're going to use flap 24 for takeoff. And when you select flap 24, you press this again, it'll update the V speeds for the existing flap setting. It defaults to flap 18 if the flaps are up uh, and your V speeds are based off flap 18. But we're going to use flap 24 for takeoff here. Um, so that's done. We now turn off the TMS temporarily. So power off and we'll now set the navigation system. So we'll turn on this, uh, 5,000 feet is the stop altitude. We are on VATSIM, but there's no ATC. 5,000 feet is set. We'll turn on the flight directors. There's, it's an RNAV SID, guys, so I'm just going to have a little look at Navigraph. It's all RNAV based. I can tune the first VOR up, which is LUL, Luxoil, and the frequency is 117.1, so I might as well just tune it to that. There's nothing else to use. 171, 1171. I've set the heading and courses to the runway heading, which is 318 degrees, 318. So that's pretty much all set up on the MCP. Uh, altitude arm, it says, and use heading as well. So we can do that now in the flight direction. So heading, out arm. Uh, HSI set, VHF comm set there. Oh, yeah, better just go on to Unicom. 122, small 8. So Unicom is active. Again, there's... Oh, no, oh no Zurich Tower is online. Oh, I could have departed Zurich, guys. Never mind. Um, so speeds are bugged. IRS or FMS is now to be loaded. Um, so there's only we're only loading the FMS for the lateral routing today, guys. So what we're going to do is go to Flight Plan. Um, and then to... Oh, sorry, Index. <clears throat> next page. You can fetch it from Simbrief, you see. Uh, route Menu flight plan from Simbrief and it'll load it in for you. Eventually. Execute. And I think it even does the the SID. Oh no, it doesn't. Runway 32. So I just need to select the SID. So runway 32. Oops. Well, maybe I had done. Runway 32. The SID is a Ramox 3 Alpha. Execute and the arrival into London City. Landing on 09 today. I don't think we've ever landed 09 uh, in City. So 09 ILS working. Uh, the arrival is going to be the Sovat 1 Charlie. Sovat 1 Charlie. And the transition is via Old, Odd Leg. Odd Leg 1 Golf. Oh, where's that? Oh, let me just have a quick look at, look at Navigraph, guys. I don't need to do this now. I just want to make sure I get the right one in. It's a godly transition. That's what I wanted. Just it take its time when you select to execute. So I just want to check now for any discontinuities. We've got two Ramox. So let's delete one of those. Execute. So Ramox, Mebok, Sovat, Urkek. Oh, we've got two discontinuities here, guys. Let me just check the flight plan quickly. So, after Sovat, it's direct to Urkek. Okay, we can just join that up. Then after Urkek, 
Godlu, and then Godlu it's direct to Elmiv, which is on the transition chart here, which I'll just select. Godlu, Elmiv, yes, yeah, so I could just join the dots. Perfect. It's it's an old, you know, it's a default FMC. It, it's fine. It lets you use LNAV and put your RNAV routing in and go from there. Right. Um, I think we're pretty much all ready to go. Uh, let's have a look here in chat. Perhaps silly question, chat, but is the 146 the same as the Avro IJ? I don't know the exact differences, John C. It's sort of, you have different ICO codes. I think there's differences between the two. Uh, that's not one for me to answer, but I'm sure chat will help you there. Uh, Supersonic Nigel said, watching some of the back catalog and saw the tickle induced go around that happened in City once. Oh, that was a long, long time ago. Brilliant, Supersonic Nigel. High Voice says, isn't the ILS approach for London City really steep? Yeah, twice as steep as normal. We're going to have to be fully configured, gear down, speed brake extended, that big speed brake extended for the approach as well to manage speed. Felix is here, everyone. Welcome, Felix. Felix developed on the uh, 747 200 X-12, which we've been flying a lot recently. Absolutely love it. Um, sink is so handy, makes me wish other planes had it. It is cool, Doc Trench. It is very, very nice. Uh, right, I think the RGS is slightly more powerful hair dryers and improved avionics. Brilliant. Uh, right then, let's have a look here at the checklist. I think we're all good. Uh, everything's configured. We've done the speeds. We can now do the engine start then. So let's uh, turn off everything here. So external power can disconnect. APU already on the generator. So. There you go, external power's off, it's already gone to the APU, very airbussy aircraft, so stow the stairs. Ah, I think I've got to turn the hydraulics on for this, haven't I? Uh, AC pump on. Yes, it uses the hydraulic pressure to raise the stairs, there we go. Such a funny looking thing, isn't it? Right, stairs are stowed, doors closed, after cargo, forward cargo, ground power, shocks, that automatically gets them to arm the doors. Excellent. So doors are closed and the air stairs retracted. So we can now turn off the AC pump for engine start. Uh, beacon light on, which is all the way up here where none of the other light controls are. Uh, so beacon light is on. APU air off, so it's not it's not like APU bleeds on on the um, seven three seven. This is purely for air conditioning, I think. Packs one and two off. Fuel pumps one to four on, and start power to normal. Uh, or start master, or start power to normal. Sorry, oh, it's in the normal position. Start master on, and we're going to go to four. And we're all ready to go, guys. So we're going to start the engines in 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, and we'll go from there. And, yeah, engine starts just electrical on the 146. Very, very cool. Again, I'll just check VATSIM, guys. Just make sure there's nothing going on. Nope, there's no ETC here. Right, let's start engine number 4. Uh, which is here. It's doing that sound, so that's good. So starting. Verify ignitions. A good a good operating M1 TGT N2 monitor fuel on at around 10% N2, just down here. All right, already at 10% N2. Let's put some fuel into this hair dryer. I'm used to the Felis 747 deafening me. This thing is <laughs> just got to Argos to get a little hair dryer. There we go. That's well, definitely started. I don't know what point you can then start the next engine. I'll wait until starter operating goes off. There we are. Starting engine number three. That is so cool. You can see you can see it uh, drawing power from the battery. And the amp amps increase, and then the uh, it slightly discharges it. So N2 10 percent. Let's try and monitor the instruments here. See what you're looking at. So N1. That'd be the fan that was the front. TGT, so slightly different to EGT. I mentioned the temperature to slightly different position. Fuel flow is a needle and used is in 10 kilo increments. And there's the fuel gauges. Ooh, needles here. God, I'm going to turn up, turn up Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just get the volume up here slightly. Starting engine number two. Just get rid of the control 
Come on, guys. Oh, I haven't briefed the SID, but we'll do that after the uh, engine start and the taxi, but taxi's pretty self explanatory. 10%. Ah, what's really cool is you see the trim isn't set. If you press this here, it'll set the trim based off your CG. 30.7. Oh, which apparently is outside the band. Interesting. Alarming. Just press that again. 30.6. Yeah, I pressed it again. Look, it's putting me outside the green band. Didn't do that on the test sector. <laughs> Starting engine number one. So I called the whisper Jeff for nothing. Nah, click spots from everywhere. Maybe I'll just wait until the engine started. Yeah, I don't like the trim being there. Yeah, Reb H, it worked for me on the test sector. Oh, I never realised that. I fly the thing all the time. I always just assumed just like forgot to give you anything for takeoff trip. No, you press that. It's fakes that. It's fakes this little free checklist I'm using. Look, I'll find where it says it, but it says click it. Maybe I'm just going to wait for the engines to start. Wonderful. Right, looks like all the lights are extinguished up there. So, four good engine starts. Start selector to off. Starter master off. We don't need engine anti ice. We'll turn that off. Generator one and four on. Which is here. And we also are using engine one and four for the electrical AC power. APU air comes on. I think this checklist has you take off with the APU on. Packs 1 and 2 on. Recirc fans also. Engine 2 and 3 hydraulic pumps on. So increasing in yellow and green hydraulic pressure. 3000 psi. AC pump on. AC pump on. Uh, PTU comes on. Heaters on. So screen heat. PTO heat. Cover, uh, Peter covers, Peter heat, uh, power for the TMS we can now turn on, I think you just turn it off during the engine start, so power on, take off, and transponder motor to TA, uh, TA, ah, I know why it could be with the trim, I haven't got the flaps out yet, so we're going to use flap 24 for takeoff, it's a short runway here, ah, look, it's doing some weird trim thing here, look, so I think I've got to wait until the, the flaps are out. Beastie flaps. They take a long time to extend, don't they? So flap 24. Now let me press that trim button now. Just hear that little click sound. There we go. We're in the green zone now, which is good. Uh, so flaps are extended. Uh, taxi lights on. Rudder trim centre centre. So we're just getting ready to taxi. Uh, and the rest is whilst we're taxiing out. So, yeah, let me just quickly grab the SID charts because I forgot to mention what we're actually doing uh, for departure. So, OFP and... No, not OFP. Charts. There we are. So we're on stand 30 at 32. That's last stream. Yankee 5, it's self positioned, so we're going to make a right turn to join the main taxiway, and it's just a straight line. Fox drop backtrack 180 off runway 32 for departure. And then the SID we're flying is the Ramok 3 Alpha, climbing straight ahead off runway 32 until we get to 3000 feet, which is 1500 feet AGL here. Left turn 270 degrees inbound to ZB100 at about 5500, max 180. And then Ramox, uh, Ramox 6000, but we've got to stop the climb at 5000 feet. So we're going to say 5000 feet. Um, so that's why we're using the higher flap setting, which reminds me, now I need to update the speeds again based off the flap setting. So I've clicked this look. There you go, lower V speeds now, and it worked okay on the test sector. Flap 8, or whatever, the uh, flap 18 didn't work. I was uh, taking out some trees, let's say. Um, right, the LNAV for departure, though, because it's a basic FMC, I selected LNAV. When it got to 3,000 feet, it commanded a right turn to Ramok, so I'm going to use heading select. 
left turn myself, and then once we're heading 054, I'll just update to 8 to Rabok and go like that. Uh, right, shall we go? Parking brake released. Do a quick config test. So you push this button. There we are. So long as it doesn't ping, you're all good to go, and we're moving already. This aircraft taxis really nicely in Microsoft Flight Simulator as well, unlike the PMDG. And, and the Phoenix, it just feels a lot more natural. It does sort of stop a little bit, uh, but it's sort of like not, not, it's not so jerky. Oh, ice detect, thank you. I think I just missed that on my checklist. Thank you. And this is the lovely Orbex. Look how pretty this is. Wonderful. I just thought I was going to take off from somewhere mountainous. I thought, no, oh, burn, that looks good. Oh, Orbex has the scenery for it. Oh, a bit of unicorn. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's the Mafia. Better be unicorn, actually, isn't it? Special. Oh, hold on. My push to talk button's still assigned to my Airbus one. I'm just going to update that quickly. Push to talk. There we are. Apply. Okay. Uh, burn traffic. Alpaca. Two Lima Charlie. Taxing to uh, runway 32 for departure. Yeah, you wouldn't want anything bigger than this. Maximum wingspan 21.5 meters. Actually, what else the wingspan on this? It's got to be, got to be less than that. Oh, Lauren, Lauren's making a reference to the days where we were playing Euro Truck Sim on the second channel. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, we're just going to wait here. Just want to get the aircraft correctly configured for departure. Right, parking brake is set. Uh, so. So, for departure, verify flaps, taxi lights, trims are all correct, config check is completed, we don't need the ignition on for departure. Uh, before takeoff, so cabin call. Cabin crew, please take your seats for takeoff. Perfect. Cabin secured slider, once secure for takeoff. Well, I imagine that's done, I don't know if she comes back to me. Uh, flight controls check, so we'll just do a quick flight control check now. So, cabin secure. Forward, back. Is there anywhere to see the flight control move? Oh, there is, look. Right, and rudders. There's nowhere for the rudders, so just like the 73. Well, I've checked the flight controls. Anyway, uh, master warning system verify. Uh, go around mode, press the small red button on the yoke. For the go around mode for departure. Okay. There we are, that's activated go around mode. And below the line, so lights to on. Strobes, which are all the way up here. Uh, weather radar on, which is down here. Got some weather. Tilt plus five. Let's extend the range. I, d I don't know if it's working or not. And transponder, we'll just set to 2000. TAR Ah! Uh, oops, didn't want to test it, but there we are, it's done. Uh, right, I think we've done everything for departure. Uh, everything's configured, ready to go. Test, okay. The same as in the 73. Uh, oh, thanks for subscribing. Welcome aboard there. Uh, Westrek, hope you're doing well. Right, let's backtrack. How do I... What have I done with the brakes here? Oh gosh, I had to trim up my swing as well. Uh, why can't I move my brakes? Ah. Oops. I think that's off now. Yes, it is. Uh, burn traffic, cow packer 2, Lima. Charlie's lining up, backtracking, take off runway 32. Wingspan is 26.34 meters. Ah, okay, maybe I wasn't meant to enter there. It is the Whisper Jet. Hey, Philly, Jim. <laughs> maybe a little bit fast there. Actually, I don't know what the width of the runway is as well. It's a little narrower than 45 meters. The timer here is old school as well. So we're going to take off, climb straight ahead until we get to 3,000 feet. Once we're at 3,000 feet, which is only uh, 1,300 feet away, left turn. We're going to climb to 5,000 feet. So just verify I've got the house sell on. There we go. Jim has the best well. job in the world. Uh, always gets a front row seat, does no work. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> right then. Togas in chat, or TMS in chat, or whatever it's called on this beast. I think we've done everything. No one's screaming anything in chat. You've forgotten this, you've forgotten that. Right, there we are. Lined up nicely. And let's now start the timer, which is down here. Go. There we are. It's just a little, tiny little clock here. Let's do it then. Uh, let me just go make sure I've got the PDF here so I don't forget what's going on. Uh, PDF, thank you. Don't want to forget anything. Right. Excellent. Uh, that's on, that's on. Done that here. There's pro streamer stuff in the background. Right. 50... 55% actually. TMS set to take off. There we are. Set take off thrust. Okay, stop. I had a config warning. That's what I do in real life. What have I forgotten? Two sex guys. Uh, config warning. Uh, let me just do the take off config test. What on earth is it? It's not it's not noise in my spoilers, is it? Something's not good here. Let me just Alright. Why is that why am I is that good? Oh look. Air brake. It's uh, it's some no it's noise in my it's some noise in my flipping thing. Alright, let's go. It's, it did this on the test sector. 55% set takeoff thrust. Oh! <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I'm not taking off with a config warning. I just did a quick one there. What is it? Rudder trim, maybe? Uh, is it this? It, I, it, well, I've not touched. I've not touched any of the trim. Uh, takeoff trim, is that because it's not on the green band? No. Uh, but it's... I've... This didn't happen on test. So APU's on, I know about that. There's no master warning systems. Right, 737. Speed brake. Uh, ah, look. Look, I saw it. No! I've got a flap speed brake, master warning system, nothing's on the master warning system. I'm not taking off with that thing blaring off. It's a good job this isn't a busy event. Steeper road, I'll use that later. What on earth? Comms radios are off as well. Yeah, I'm not using the comms radios? What do you mean comms radios? But I... But it is saying it's stowed. But this is, this is really annoying. Set the trim wheel where the EFB wanted you to. I ha it was set to that. Let me just reset that quickly. Oh, uh, hmm. You know, I'm not. I don't. I want to know what's causing it. Aircraft. So I've set that trim now. Ah, hold on. No, that's just config, isn't it? It's not brakes or anything stupid like that. Aileron trim. Aileron trim's perfectly. S Maybe it needs to be like. Oh my god! Are you joking? Oh, that is ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Right. It's literally the tiniest twiddlest of of aileron trim. I think I might have knocked it with my mouse wheel. Okay, that's a bug. It has to be a bug. So, it, there we go. Right, timing. Let's <laughs> reset the timer. Unbelievable. Right, thanks for having Who? Well, you must have had the same problem. Togas in chat. Ah, oh, silly machine. It was like, ugh, now I've got a vehicle crossing the runway. Set takeoffs rest. Hooray! Power set, NYG. Thank you. It's got a bit too much there. TMS should take over. There we go, that's the TMS taking over. Speed alive, both sides. Checked. 80 knots. Release forward pressure. Pay for runway, use all of runway. 
Oh my days! Oh my days! Oh, well that, that didn't happen on the test sector. <laughs> I had to commit. Oh, gear's coming up. Well, that was that was sketchy as hell. Oh, now the gear won't come up either. Oh dear. Maybe maybe TMS hadn't set. <laughs> oh dear. This is this is not going very well. Right, we're airborne now. Oh, we're gonna maintain. Oh, I just want to lower the nose here slightly. Well, unbelievable. <laughs> That was sketchy as hell. <laughs> Should have it, it, you know why? It's because I kept going forward every every few seconds because of that aileron trip. Right, we're waiting until wait until three thousand feet. Right, sink. Yeah, it's holding that pitch there. Let's get it in trim. Right, we're going to maintain this until uh, we're doing an NEDP one departure here. So we're going to maintain this speed until uh, what was the elevation here? Sixty so until four thousand six hundred feet. There's 3,000 feet, left turn. We're on our way now. Right, let me just update this heading. So, heading select. I'm going to roll out a heading of 054. Oops. Yeah, that's the stick shaker. Well, that's quite angry. I like how if you pull up a lot of G, the stick shaker goes off. That's the heading I want to roll at now. V2 plus 10, safe high speed, select a flat 80. Mm, I'm just going to wait until 4600. Now I don't like how the flight director started banking the other way. Right there we are, now I'm back on it. So I want to go, 5000 feet to the stop altitude. So we are going to stop off at 5 initially, just want to get inbound to Ramok. We're going to leave the thrust when we level off at 5,000 and let the aircraft accelerate. Uh, the RNAV's... Actually, let's go over now to RNAV. There we are. So now we're at 3,000 feet AGL. We can accelerate the aircraft. I will just get up to 5,000 feet to level off. There's 5,000 feet. We're going to keep the thrust where it is, just get the aircraft to accelerate. We're going to flap 18. We're going to accelerate to 250 knots level, trimming those down. It's, lovely. it's really nice to hand fly. Flaps up, having to trim those down as the aircraft accelerates, maintaining 5,000 feet inbound to Ramok. The RNAV uh, HSI is like loading up quite nicely. Bug 250. Ooh. That's because the flap's coming up, losing the lift. Uh, where's the little speed bug 250? Yeah, so one thing you might want to do, guys, one of my members showed me yesterday, is turn off realistic turbulence settings because it ain't realistic at all. Right, there's 250 knots, 5,000 feet. It's flying really nicely. Right, I think we've had all the fun now, so. All the pilots down here, isn't it? All the pilots in. Uh, 5,000 feet, I'll engage LNAV. Uh, heading, 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 where is LNAV? LNAV, LNAV, just going a little bit beyond 250 there, just slow down to 250. I should be right on the SID here. Uh, that, that, uh, where am I? Where's the little aeroplane icon? Uh, look at that! Uh, we need to be out above 6,000 now, so we'll climb up to 3... 2,500. That's, that, that's not nice, of departure. <laughs> Let's climb up to 32,000 feet now. So 32,000 feet. Uh, it's going a little bit fast here, so I want to go to indicated airspeed hold. God, it's bumpy. So we get back to 250. Oof. Right, there's 250, indicated airspeed. There's the 90 degree turn. 
indicated airspeed hold, second climb thrust, which is 90% N1. Out arm, set standard. And now I want to do TMS to sync, 89.4, which is pretty much what we're doing and what we've set. 250 knots in the climb, we're turning left after Ramok on route. Uh, let me just show you where we are on route. Uh, ah. I jumped on the autopilot in now. That was a really enjoyable departure, but there we are. Left turn, put the airplane icon on. There we are. Left turn to Ramok, inbound to Mebox. I'll turn the sim down slightly and then we can do the after takeoff uh, checklist there. That was a busy departure. I nearly became a cropper. <laughs> nearly became a cropper. Right, after takeoff uh, checklist. So. Uh, done the initial climb before takeoff, after takeoff. So brakes are hold with that, flaps are up, gears up, autopilot's engaged, engine one, two, four air on. So this is like bleed air. APU air off, and APU can come off now as well. That's normal for engine start in this. Uh, sync TMS, which I've done, master select one. Oh, it's already on, sorry, wrong one. Master select one. AC pump off, PTU can come off as well. AP load pressure, that's the AP shutting off. I think that's normal. There we go. Uh, cabin cool. Now we have to take off checklist complete. Well, we're alive at least. <laughs> now, the thing is, I've. Is any BAE 146 experts here? Is there anything I did wrong there on departure? Apart from obviously, uh, you know, rolling a little bit down the runway with the with the aileron trip, they need to increase the limit there. Like, you know, one unit like that, and it was just enough to set the, the conflict warning. But we weren't going anywhere until we found out what was causing that. Because, and that, if that if that's going off, that means the aircraft is not correctly configured for takeoff. You know, I was to take off and do that, and my operator would lose my job. So. <laughs> You know, uh, it's to be taken seriously. Um, but yeah, we're, we're on IS hold and uh, everything's doing well. We're going to maintain 250 ish knots until we get to three, uh, 10 pounds feet, then we'll accelerate to about 270. Uh, I'll use the sync feature for that. But yeah, the turbulence on realistic in Microsoft Flight Simulator now is, is rubbish. Like it just jumps all over everywhere. Uh, Peter, I would have said 88 degrees on the TMS for that. As 88 degrees like that, a uh, full thrust then, Peter. <laughs> Let me come about we're alive. But, uh, yeah, you can already see now that we've got full climb thrust, so we're doing a thousand feet per minute at 250 knots. Do some fuel and time checks on route as well. Just uh, rattling off a quick message. Excellent. Right, passing 10 to flight level 320. What I'm going to firstly do is try this uh, sync feature. So I'll try and demonstrate how this works. So, as I said, I've assigned a button on my yoke to trim. It's the afterburner command in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if I push this down temporarily, you'll see it goes sync, and that temporarily disconnects the autopilot. I can now lower the nose with the pitch, set what I want to do, so there we are, let's just do a shallow climb, press it again, and it will now hold, no, have I got to go to, no, my apologies, I'd have to go to vertical speed first, I think, yeah, vertical speed, sync, then, set, ooh, that's going to make you feel sick, set your target, vertical speed, then press it again. Now the aircraft will maintain that vertical speed. Pretty cool. I don't know what the econ climb speed is, but we'll bug about 270. And then once we get to the target speed, I'll go IS hold. <laughs> I just <laughs> see the comment there. Wait until love this. This is just shows you how if you're going fast or slow to your bug speed. 
So as soon as it's bang in the middle there, we'll go to IS hold. So slow. Go on. I can get a little bit more climb for us here. I think 820 it says in the tutorial. You said. There we are. So that's on speed now. So IS hold the aircraft's now going to pitch to maintain the indicated airspeed. Just like level change in the MG. Air one is 88% and then one plus one percent every 5,000 feet. Oh, very cool. Looks good. Thank you. Yeah, Rab H, that's what I've done. Turbulence is now set to low. Yeah, not realistic. Realistic is just absolutely ridiculous. I was doing it to London City yesterday, and it was just like I was losing 300 feet at a time. The aircraft was shaking all over the place. I was like, yeah, that's not realistic. Works for Pfizer. Oh, what a day to go flying. Oh, yoke cap is still up. Mighty Snark says, if you check videos of the landing, you often uh, uh, you often times see them close the low pressure valves at about 200 feet or lower just before touchdown, so the engines can have maximum thrust in case of going around. How reassuring! My goodness me! Now we overhead Lumel. Got the uh, routing here anyway. Now I'm about to Torpa. Better than having. No FMC, at least you can sort of re fly online on that sim. Using all the existing airways. I uh, understood uh, Nox Gaming, so we should be about oh, I'm a little bit high then. Let me just take a little bit off the thrust then. Oh, I do miss auto throttle. <laughs> Nox Gaming, you do A20 TGT. Uh, Outfly level 140 if you want max climb. At the expense of engine life. Doesn't matter in the sim. <laughs> that is good to know. Uh, Peter Green, I guess, will be landing in city with the air brake deployed on approach. It will be extended, correct. I'll try not to do what that uh, 146 did on London City. Everyone knows about that video. Uh, Dr. Trench, if you change the IS mode, it's easier to turn IS mode off, which will put the FD at attitude. Hold, then use the trim buttons to change the attitude aim before, and then you rotate again. Then once you reach speed, you want to engage your ice hold. That's sort of what works in the Felix 742 as well. And it's, I sort of did the same thing instead of went to VS, and then I used this sync feature to, to change the vertical speed. Oh, remember to set steep approach. I'll do that now. It's on. It's not everything seems to work, doesn't it? Like this, everything's clickable, has a button. Oh, I didn't uh, do the pre-cruise checks, did I? Uh, let's just run through that checklist quickly then. Uh, so fuel, oh, cabin cool. Oh, I think that's just on there. Uh, so lights can come off, turn off, and uh, seatbelt sign that can come off. Uh, a AP pressurization, that's by Jim's knee. There we are. So diff pressure is uh well cabin altitude is quite high, it's gone straight to eight thousand feet. Um which is why the diff pressure is so low, and that will slowly climb. And set seatbelts off. There's nothing on the master caution system, which has been upset a bit more anymore. Air drives on full power. <laughs> there we are. Uh, yeah, fuel. We'll do a fuel check. What's our first waypoint? Or next waypoint after top of climb? <coughs> so three. Oh no, three two zero. We're going to. So we'll do a fuel uh, a fuel check at Rollenplon seventeen three. Three two zero. Actually, I that's it. Nav 1, 17, 3 for back up on the VOR. We are 63 miles away. We are, so even though we're using R nav, this is R nav distance and then this is DME distance from the VOR, 17, 3. I don't get DME on on this one. I don't need it. 
Super Carl says hello. Are you going to test the um, 748 or 787 after AAU 2 is out? Yeah, it's only in beta. I, I haven't got the time right now to try the the, the beta 78 and uh, 74 because you've got to essentially reinstall, uninstall Microsoft Flight Simulator. I just don't have the time right now to do that. Um, but when it, get, it becomes public, I will uh, try it out. Wiley Snark says the old F-28 from Project Fokker for, as long, uh, for a long time was my favourite jet. I've never heard of that or flown it. But yeah, the F-28 from Just Flight looks very exciting. Give that a, we'll give that a shot. Uh, Stefan Hayner, I have to say that the 146 scratches the 747-200 itch for me and it's probably the most complete jetliner add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I, I agree with you there. I mean, the Phoenix, I'm not a 320 driver, but that seems very, very complete. The PFDG 737s are excellent. But, but this this gives you that sort of flying in the 70s and 80s vibe, all the steam gauges, and an overhead panel that looks like this. Uh, gives you plenty to do. Does it, Jim? <laughs> like I actually look towards me. Uh, yeah, it's good, it's good. Hi, Lewis, hope you're doing well. Uh, manage to, uh, Monja, to my knowledge, it's very easy to join the beta. Yeah, I think it is. I think anyone can, can't they? It's just, it's a, you have to uninstall and reinstall Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, it's so hot in here. I am absolutely sweating. <laughs> 28 degrees outside. I didn't need to do that, just installed a very small beta. Oh, well, I, 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 I don't know, that's what I was told. But I, I, anyway, I haven't got the time to sort of jump in and try it at the moment anyway. Cyber Z, and aside from the light switches, the 146 overhead panel is really logically and well designed. Overall it is. There's a few little things I'd change. For example, like the the fastest seatbelt sign is as far as possible from sort of like the cabin no smoking sign. Look, no smoking signs up here. It's like lights and notices, I suppose, and it is a notice, but the, the, some thought was giving into it as opposed to say like the, the MD-80, which is just a real mix match of just switches and gauges. Well, we've been airborne now for, uh, what's that, 15, nearly 20 minutes, and we've just uh, reached 19,000 feet in 20 minutes. Oh, I don't think I've seen this one. Oh my, that's very detailed. Look at that. We've just got over Saul. Flaggy is over the nose here, so on the left we've got Vesol. There it is. Right, rack it out here. That's cool. Nice EFB. They've done a, a good thing. It's very tidy. The aircraft one is a little, sort of, a bit, yeah, old school looking, but um, it works. They've got a pushback feature on here now, which is quite nice. I've not actually tried it. How dare you insult the bad dog? Oh. Yes, two tons, but no AC. It's 28 degrees outside and about 32 here on the thermostat. I remember in Arizona when I was there, 40 feet, you can go outside in the summer, in the height of summer, but it was ice cool in all the buildings. Yeah, true as well, Euros. The PC does kick out an awful lot of heat. An awful lot of heat. Cabin sounds are nice as well. They change based on how close you are to the engine. Let's have, a little, let's have a little walk around the cabin. Now, that would have been loud. I have been on a 146 as a kid. Oh, yeah. That's nice. I think it was quite a loud cabin, wasn't it? 125 seats, I think. 
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's nice. The cabin's quite basic, but, you know, it has a cabin at least. Nice. When you pass 240, make sure you switch to back mode and target decimal 65. Roger. Almost there. We'll stay at soon When we get to indicated it, we'll maintain the indicated airspeed. When we do 65, I'll switch to Mac hold. So slow climbing. 20 minutes airborne. 20,000 feet. 1,000 feet a minute average. I mean, I know I leveled off at 5,000 feet for a short while. A short time in the cruise, but we're nearly a quarter of the way and we're still climbing. F Master, one of the uh, best jets of Microsoft Flight Sim hands down. So nice to hand fly. Agreed. Yeah, that departure was um, really nice to hand fly. Do that uh, level off at 5,000. Uh, yeah, I was making instinctive inputs and it, it handled very nicely. Box Gaming enabled TGT on TMS set to 820, roger. Ooh, it's doing a thing. Now, you see it's adding it thruster. Does the actual thrust levers move, move when it does that? Ah, now, now I'm getting a bit more juice out of it. Oh yeah, that's an extra 100 feet per minute. Good suggestion, thank you. TFC hairbag using the tortoise emoji. The best, best describe our progress. Wonderful. Our last day off today, guys. I'm uh, back to work tomorrow at full block. No standbys. <clears throat> so I won't be working to. I'll be. Uh, uh, yeah, not. I won't be off until next week. Very busy at the moment. Very busy. And those who are in the UK, there was a lot of disruption yesterday. The airlines are all in the UK. Huge thunderstorms. Huge thunderstorms. Um, sort of from um, Oxfordshire, I think it started to, from London all the way up to the Midlands and up towards Manchester. I think it caused a lot of disruption for the airports yesterday. Uh, I was quite glad to be off though. Knox Gaming, there's a little lever inside the throttle that the TMS moves, so it's like an auto throttle that has very, very limited control range. Yeah, so, so you basically set the thrust to where it is and the TMS makes small adjustments to fine tune. Yeah, that is my sort of understanding. Uh, your, your busy time of the year for aviation? Absolutely, yeah, this is my busiest period now. But I was very busy in the winter and I'm racking up my hours. Um, racking up my hours. <laughs> Martin, I'll be looking for cloud quality ratings on Instagram. Did anyone like that? I don't know if you saw it, guys. I was flying and it was completely like overcast at 36,000 feet. Like white blanket. Looked like low quality clouds in, in the sim and then flew for another hour and I was like, oh, high quality. I just thought that was quite funny. Supersonic Nitro, no thunderstorms in Scotland, just absolutely roasting here. Yeah, you need some rain up there, don't you? Isn't Loch Ness getting quite low? The the water level there. As <laughs> you can say it now. Low quality clouds next to top. Yes, I agree. Gonna turn it down slightly. A bit of a whine. These engines. There we go. A forty eighty forty six hundred had some proper engines though. Yeah, the um, they had CFMs. No, which one had the CFMs? It was really underpowered. And then the um, the three forty six hundred had um, Trents, didn't they? I don't they? 40 degrees in Dallas, ouch.
Uh, Joker, and I love the way you criticised the 146, yet before the 737 Classics and NG existed, the 146 and the F-100, they were the mainstay at European flying. Heck, half of my colleagues at Air UK fly, fly with you at your... Ah, uh, do they now? <laughs> they probably do. Yeah, that is true. It's just all... There's a lot of needles and switches and gauges in this thing. But did the latter 146s, or the Avros, did they ever have glass cockpits? We are we are crawling up. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to be yeah. So I've calculated what was it? Top of descent was ten nauticals before diaper. So thirty. Yeah, we've just got over hundred miles till top of descent. They re did they? They did full MCP and in order throttle. No way. And is that the Avros? Or just the latter one four sixes? Oh, if that comes out with. The update just like doing that's going to make this aircraft hell a lot easier to, to fly on the network. Ah, thanks, Noxium Gaffer. Is basically the VAE 146 with better engines, glass cockpits, including a modern avionics package. Oh, very good. Well, Coxie, watch the extreme. What's wrong with that waypoint? Look at this weather, though, over Europe. You can see why it's so hot everywhere. Completely clear. Yeah, this looks like the middle of France. I fly over here a lot, so it looks just like this in real life. Superb. Lovely ladder, isn't it? It's been a long time since we've flown it on on uh, in the sim. Uh, it must be nearly a year. I can't actually remember. I did a test sector yesterday. I jumped back in it. I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> but it does. It's, when you jump into an aircraft for the first time and just do a quick flight, it does quickly come back to you. It's a really good point, Knox Gaming. Yeah, the slow removal of nav A procedures means something like the F-28 could struggle on that sim. Yeah. You know, when I fly the Phoenix 742 with with INS, I often have to sort of cherry pick the the, the routing, um, especially flying in Europe. It, sometimes flying in sort of like an island makes it a bit easier, like an island destination. Um, so I sort of like look out for facts of events and sort of stick with the classic aircraft because you can route conventionally that way. Yeah, DF, DFW HVAC looks like a repeat of last year of all those high temps in Europe. Yeah, it was. We um, had a lot of drought here in the UK. We had a lot of rain, sort of beginning of the year. But it, I mean, we got caught on the edge of a thunderstorm yesterday, and it had a bit of rain. But it was the first rain we'd had in probably uh, three or four weeks. It's very dry now. Lauren B seven four two is our nav. Yeah, be our nav though, Lauren. You can't do our nav arrivals, stars, approaches in that thing. So it's only good for on. Led to believe Martin Keel. Holy moly, this is taking a long time to climb. Well, I was meant to do a, a fuel check <laughs> 28 miles ago. You know what I do really like are the gauges on this little rotary knobs, so that how they just turn. It's really cool. You never switch it to mag mode. That might be, yeah, ah, that might be why we are struggling to climb. That explains a lot. Right, so what I'm actually going to do now is go to vertical speed. I'm going to pitch up to 2,000 feet per minute. Sink. There we are. And let the speed bleed off till Mach decimal 68. We'll trade some of our kinetic energy into potential. There's 68. That's 
working quite nicely, that is. That's about 6.8 there, so... Mac, there we are. Now the aircraft's going to pitch for this one, 6.8. Well, I'm going to have to have a little cool down after this as soon as we get to the cruise level. Need to resync the autopilot, it's not that smart. Uh, how do you mean? Resync it. If it's in Mac hold, surely it's going to fly direct, it's going to pitch with the small six eight. But, I mean, I used the sync just then. Uh, I used the sync feature to get to decimal 68 at 2000 feet per minute, but I reselected Mac exactly at decimal 68, so I think it should be pitching for the speed now. This seems to be pretty much holding it quite nicely. One to go. Lawrence has resync TMS. I'll just climb at decimal 68. I'm so close now. And that's my cruise speed as well, so I can just reduce the thrust at that. Eros, uh, I recommend getting a table fan, make swimming during the summer bearable for me. Problem is though, that will hit be picked up on the mic. Which won't be bearable for those watching. Uh, decimal seven zero. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh, I've just, I can't be asked to change it. It's effort. I know, 320, that's where Simbrief put me. Mate, it's the difference between this one and the one in X-Plane. I have flown the X-Plane one. I remember when I first tried the Microsoft Flight Simulator, reassuring, reassuringly when I tried the Microsoft Flight Sim 146. It felt quite similar. Right, and then I booked my notes for cruise. You set the uh, TGT to around 600 to 700. Where was it here? Yeah, TGT can be used to hold a target value between 600 and 700. Is good depending on weight. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, 32,000 feet. Reducing thrust now. I'll go for about six, six eighty or something. Seems to be holding the speed nicely. <coughs> Even TGT hold. Seems to be holding the speed quite nicely. There we go. And how long did that take? 35 minutes? Right guys, I'm just going to dip to the toilet and uh, get some fresh eggs. I'm absolutely melting here. Uh, I'll be back in about uh, four, four or five minutes. Cheers guys.
Oh, thanks for that, guys. I am melting here. Thermostat, I just checked 32 degrees on my thermostat upstairs. I, honestly, I walked in back into the office and I was like, poof. PC is like pumping out so much hot air. Dying up here. Uh, Hayden, uh, is it a toilet set? Let's change your department settings to last. Brilliant. But uh, yeah, I'm a. Uh, I am flagging a little bit. I am. I'll keep on going for now. Oh, gosh. I've got a little bit faster here as well, just below MMO. Let's just take a little bit of thrust off. Yeah, look, that's way high. There we are. 840, 860. Perfect. Uh, right, we've just flown over a waypoint, I believe. Uh, Oh, what was it? Uh, my notes. It said, uh, died or diaper. Yeah, 10 miles before diaper, I need to start descent. Okay, so it's about 18 miles to go. Let's start looking here at the setup then, if we get the charts open. Just standing here. Uh, so. I go back. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Well, let us sit here. Thank you very much again, Codop Key, for the five euros. You can use the numpad to make Serpect fly by shots. What? You do never again need to fiddle around with the camera window. I will post the commands in chat. In it, what? S -s fly by shots. Oh my goodness me. Uh, I'll, I'll have a look at that. Uh, I've got the capacity to sort of play around with that today. Thank you. So I said check pressurisation. Uh, diff is just below the maximum limit. 7 psi. The cabin altitude is 8,000. A bit high but it's holding. It is the cabin altitude's level. Mm. Don't know what uh, the maximum cabin altitude is but uh, nothing to see here. 50, 40, <laughs> 30, 20, <laughs> Thanks Aiden. 10. I've just got a bottle of water. Oh, some ice cream, that's what I need. Have a nice drink, cap underscore FD2 Salpaca. <laughs> FD2 Salpaca. Cheers, Hayden, thank you. If only I had a vending machine in my house, otherwise I'd go get one. <laughs> Thanks, buddy, appreciate it. Actually, you know what, I've got, I've got a old mount cider in the uh, fridge, but uh, I don't really fancy any alcohol today. Uh, right, I just want to actually do a quick fuel check, because we've just overflown... Uh, a waypoint over Didor, that was the one. So let's have a little look here, see we're progressing. Didor. <laughs> Diaper. Didor, so 43 minutes airborne. We've been airborne for 43, 44, so flight time's good. We should have about 3 tons, we took an extra 1100, so we should have about 4.1 tons in the tanks. We've got... 4.1, 4.2, so fuel burn's good. And Dido, we should have used 2.2 tons. 5, 10, 15, 20, 2,102. 2.2. They've definitely improved the fuel burn. I remember the Simbri flight plan used to be uh, a bit off, but someone has made, when you select in Simbri, the 146 now. So the BA146-300, there is like a just flight option. So I just selected that one as well. So fuel's all good, time check's good as well. Uh, let's start setting up for this approach into city. So, back to charts. We're flying a Sovat 1 Charlie. So, we're starting at Sovat. We're flying 09 today. Briefing. Noise abatement arrival, speed restrictions. Uh, thanks, that's what we need. So, starting on the start, uh, working backwards, then let's have a look at the restrictions. So, Sovat Max 250 at Urkek, Ocvab 250, but that's the first restriction we need to comply with. Look, Godlu at Max 210 knots, flight level 100. Okay, so that's the first restriction we need to comply with. Now, the 146, I don't know what the up speed is. I think it's like 205, so that's okay. I'll probably maintain 220, hopefully 220. So, working backwards from Godlu, we know we need to be at 10,000 feet. Look at this great calculator here. So, sink altitude, sink ground speed. Target altitude is 10,000 feet. 
three degree glide path. I need to do 2,100 feet put it. There you go. 70 miles from uh, the waypoint, which was uh, well, whatever it was. Let's have a look here. Um, Godly. Now, I did a bit of maths earlier. If you have a look at the operational flight plan. you look here at Godlu, where is it? God, look at remaining distance, 69 miles. What I did, I just worked backwards from this. So remaining distance, 69, and we've got also, it's just completely coincidental that it's also 69 miles on top of drop. So what I did, I worked out 69 miles on top of remaining distance of 69 is um, 140, let's call it 140. So remaining distance, 140. Diaper was 129, so 10 miles before that's 139, 140, so 10 miles before Diaper will start our descent at 2,100 feet per minute, and we should be exactly at flight level 100, give or take a little bit, because obviously as we, we descend we'll decelerate, uh, we should be making that making that restriction. So, as I said, 10 miles from Diaper is when we'll start our descent, and look, we've only got 50 miles to go, so 40 miles till top of descent. So that's the initial star. Sovat, Urkak, Ogvap, Godlu. Sovat, Urkak, Ogvap, Godlu. 10,000's in there. And then we go to this transition. So this goes Godlu, Elmiv. Now, if there's no ATC, guys, what I'm going to do is not do the full transition. I'm not going to go up here to 11, 12, 13, then a left turn. I'm going to go from Elmiv to Ravsa. Uh, I don't think we're going to have any, there's no events going on in London, there's no issues of ATC, so what I'm going to do is leave the routing in, and as we approach Elmiv, I'm going to make a left turn direct to Ravsa, and we have to descend to be at 6,000 feet at Ravsa. But if you can see here, you've got the full routing in for now, Godlu, 11, 12, 13, Ravsa, so 11, 12, 13 goes north, then left, westbound, but we're just going to go from Elmiv direct, because it's quiet. Ravsa 6,000, Gagp 6,000, checked in the FMC, and then we have Atpev, here we're just holding 07 Osfev 07 Osfev 0102 and Toby and we're going to be at 2,000 feet right over South London here really low really slow I might not go all the way back to 185 until we start turning final then odd leg spits south onto the ILS look uh, and it's quite a short final I think odd leg I think it's like seven eight miles so we need to get nice and configured early so I'll get everything set up for the ILS now trip 115 Active. Course is zero nine two. Zero nine two. So frequencies course is minimums. Got the NDB as well, three two two. Oh, where's the uh, ADF? What? How do I do the other one? <laughs> I can't do the middle one. <laughs> ah! Oh, I did it there briefly. There we go. Three, two, two. I have finally. Uh, ADF, ADF. There we are. So we've got frequency forces, minimums. Three, two, two. And uh, the minimums are for a cat. Was it cat? What category is this? Is it B? Let's go for B. 431, so 414. I'm going to use this so we get the, the call out. Four twenty. It's top percent. Ten miles from diaper. Still 18 miles to go. Now this is the crux. Cr cr if you've never seen me fly into London City, guys, um, this is it. Look, 3.4 miles at 2,000 feet. It's at the ILS. At 3.4 miles! <laughs> so close! And we turn on to the ILS at 6 miles. So we're going to be fully configured, gear down, landing flap, which is flat 33, and then we'll arm the speed brake. And as soon as we intercept the ILS at 3.4 DME, we're going to get that speed brake out. Oh, yeah, not 6 3, sorry, 5.5. We're probably doing about 120 knots, so we'll need to maintain 1200 feet per minute to stay on this approach. That'll be destabilised on a normal approach, but you have to maintain that for this. 
so 5.5 degrees, MSA no issues, 2300. So, landing performance, there isn't a landing take up of, uh, or landing performance calculator, unfortunately, with the aircraft, but just to show you, look, it's a shorter runway, 1500 meters, slightly displaced, the actual landing distance beyond the threshold is going to be around 1300 meters or so. Uh, yeah, 1319, and we'll vacate. And this is the brand new Orbex scenery I've got here, guys. So we're going to make a right turn, and we've got a parallel taxiway. And we'll probably park in front of the East Apron somewhere. There we go. That's it. I think we've covered everything, and that is 10 miles from top of descent. Oh, Dock Trench, 146, a special bit of it. It's 344. I'll go off of what you say then. Is that from some unique chart I have no access to? 350 it is. Beautiful. Excuse my geography, I'm just looking on a map here. Abbeville's down there, that's it. Abbeville. Le Touquet. Oh, I flew in there years ago when I was doing my hour building. Well, as a passenger. Le Touquet's over there. That's great. Welcome aboard Tic Tac, hope you're doing well. Oh, it's on the bottom of the jet, really. BAE 146, I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. An aircraft specific minimums. 361, 344. Brilliant. So cool. Thanks for the heads up on that. There we are, 11.4. Let's start our descent. We're going to go down to 100. Uh, well, no ATC here. Anymore. 100. I'm going to select descent. And that ensures a minimum N1 of 60%. And now I'm going to slowly reduce the thrust. Go to IS hold. Down we go. Top of set shirts. Welcome aboard, Bob Dar. Hope you're doing well. Four. Now, can uh, you really want me to do so? I'm in perfect, not example. Press insert key on the keyboard. Press five on your numpad. Oh, I'll try that on canopy. I'll look at back and I'll try that on a test sector. I'm not, I'm, you know, sounds like it could work. Uh, right, now I'm going to go to vertical. S yeah, you know what? I'm going to go VS and then I'm just going to maintain that target speed. Looking good. This is great. Could just maintain, keep looking at that. It updates it based off your current altitude and speed, so it gives you the exact vertical speed you need to reach 10,000 feet and distance. It's really cool. Ah. Oh no, that was It's going to be level, flight level 100 at uh, Godlu. 12.3. Just got to add it all up. That should work out well. Be out late to party. What does the one four six have specific bit about? I think that's just specific to city. It's London Centre online. No, no ATC at all. Gatwick standard. That's it. Only ground. Got anything important, have I? Cruise descent, approach and landing. V oh yeah, V speeds. So I'll, I'll click that now to get those set. Uh, there we go. And it updates based off your landing weight, and it updates it to the nearest ten tons. But when we get the flaps out, we'll update it again. Hmm. Hair dryers on low. Not much of a whisper jet. Flaps up speed, flap 18 speed max, 210 knots. Okay.
Well, I put, picked a perfect day to fly down the Thames Estuary. There for 1970 something, it's pretty quiet. That is true, uh, Stephen Hayden, it is quiet. So we need 46 miles to get to 10,000 feet based off our present target ground speed and uh, altitude. So, love this, love this. Just a very simple utility. Beat time to try and work it out manually in the field of 742, which I always do conservatively, but it does work. Not so quite an external view. Oh, it's not too bad. There we are, David Calais. What happened? Oh, there's a few clouds here. Look at I'm getting great FPS. 60 FPS here. So smooth. Take a lot of time to perfect my settings for you guys, which is no stuttering. Okay, just use high end 1080. Graphics are absolutely fine. Oh, I can't wait to try this Avro 146 out then. Alex, uh, how does this plane keep from speeding up at 3 degree angle without prop speed brake? It's just, if you look at the profile of it, it's it's not the most aerodynamic, so uh, you know we're holding three degrees here, which requires about two thousand feet per minute, and I'm not even at idle, nowhere near at idle. There you go, look, thrust is up here. I think the TMS actually is making sure I have at least sixty percent M1 here as well, even slightly less than that. I think that's a pressurisation. And you've got the barn doors at the back, if required, which we'll be using after glycosome intercept today. Just about approaching Ratuk, then now routing direct to Sovat. That's the beginning of the star. No water break, remember, no reverses. No way, Dr. Trench, you don't need speed brakes uh, on the 5.5% approach if you've got the flat as well. That's what I found, but what I found with the speed brake extended. It allowed me to sort of set a higher thrust setting, which is just easy to control the speed with. And also it's out for landing already. Uh, how Sebastian, when doing a visual approach in a VMC, do you need to use a decision height or decision altitude? No, there's no minimums on a visual approach. A visual approach is a, is a visual approach. Uh, but at my operator, we set the elevation plus 500 feet as a sort of like a stabilization call. So you do get the minimum score at 500 AGL. But no, there isn't anything there. One says, no reverse, no order break, but at least no take off config warning. Shut up! <laughs> I can't believe that. That one tiny little notch on the aileron trim. So literally, that and the take off config warning what sounded. So Godlu 10,000, 12, 17, 25, 24, about 24 miles. And we're going to be level in 22. Look at that. It works. Two, what, two miles before we'll be level. <laughs> Pete White trying to use the 146 and call Chevelle. The air brake and the big spoilers do help. Yes. speed. Oh, my speed's very, very high. Now I use the big speed brake arm here. Look, I mean, look how effective that is. Butter or bust? Oh, my days. It's like a parachute. Well, that's one way to control your speed. You, f I, I remember someone telling me when you extended that speed brake, it fe you could feel it decelerate. You could literally feel the deceleration. Alex has memed up a few long-necked alpacas sticking their head out of the window. Probably creates decent drink, no, true. 
Anyway, if you just joined this stream, welcome aboard. We've just passed uh, 15,000 feet. Seatbelt signs going on. We're in descent uh, into London City in the 146. Just like 146 in Microsoft Flight Sim. Bound to Ockvap. Aiming to be at max 210, 100 odd. I'm going to maintain about 220. The reason is it starts moaning at you about um, um, extending the flaps on approach. The, the first officer does, Jim does. So I'll probably maintain about 220. I'll bump now, actually. About there. Still got the speed break out. Don't mind being early a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, being level a little earlier. Ah, oh, nice little breeze just came in here. Whew. So, so hot. Got the speed break out fully. Just bring that speed back to 220. Five one hundred twelve miles. Oh, Scott! The temperature. The temperature is insane. And it's not the temperature outside, it is 28, 29 degrees, but the temperature in the house is in excess of that. Oh yeah, let's use my sink feature. I did a... Oh look! Woo, that was close. I didn't arm it. I didn't arm it. Could have been a cropper there. So, about 220 we're going to maintain. And we're going to go... Godlu onto the transition chart now. So from Godlu, we're going to route to Elmiv. Max 2 tower. I'm just going to do 220, guys. We did it. Nice CDA. Good save, I know. So we leveled off about 8 miles early. That's that's not bad. CDAs, forget about it in this into London City. It's very strict altitudes, very low, very early. You've got departures out of Heathrow. Trust now to maintain 220 knots. That could have been a nice phone call of ATC. We had about. Lights coming on. Turn off's already on. APU's all fine. Pressurisation. How is it, Jim? Jim says it's fine. Well, the cabin altitude is really high still, 8,000 feet. It's just dropped the diff pressure. So we complied with that restriction, just as I said, going a little bit faster, 220. Oh, yeah, close to Ah, oh, well there is the port of Dover. I don't even know where the cliffs are there. Is that Dover? Yeah, that would be Dover, wouldn't it? Right over the top of Dover. Hi Atlanta J, hey, I'm back, how are the hairdryers holding up? They're just fine. Oh, it's holding 220 beautifully. There we are. So after Elmiv, there's no ATC, we're going to go direct to Ravsa, okay? So I'll clear these now. We are number one into London City. Next restriction, 6,000 feet by Ravsa. And let's just confirm what the q and is. Refresh. London City. Uh Meta is one zero one four. Twenty seven degrees zero nine zero sixteen. It's a good headwind actually, it's gonna help out. I'm actually doing a boga in this. Now, I need to give you guys a heads up. The landing rate calculator in Microsoft Flight Simulator isn't the most accurate. It's based off the the in the 
indicated vertical speeds on the IVSI, so there could be a little bit. It, it doesn't replicate the exact rate of descent on touchdown as opposed to one in X plane, which it actually does. So if it's a bit higher, bear with me. Yeah, excuses already. I know, Marty. Got to get them in. And look at CL putting the same comment in as well. Yes, Doc Trench. Now, on my test sector, it did go a bit wonky on the final approach. It sort of recovered itself, but I think the key thing is before localizer capture, because this this position here, odd leg, it is not far from touchdowns, like six miles, so you've got to make sure you're sort of getting configured there nice and early and bring the speed back to help out. We'll, we'll try it today. Adam K, sure, sure. <laughs> Oh, I've just had a, an RA. Oh, lovely. 50, 40, what is this guy 30, doing? Oh no, he's 20, actually just genuine 10, sim user. 10, 10, 10. Lovely. <laughs> Cheers, uh, Eros. Jim, what did you with the packs? We will melt in this heat. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Are the packs still off? No, they're on. Thank you. Oh, maybe, maybe nervous there. Uh, yes, uh, he's left them on, but certainly not in my office, that's for sure. Thank you very much, Dave, for your donation, though, or us. I hope you're doing well. And I hope you enjoy your mug when you get it. Uh, right, we can go down to 6,000 feet now. 6,000 feet. Arm. Um, indicated airspeed hold. 220. Slowly reduce thrust. Now, at what point do I turn off the TMS? I, I know you do it on final, but I still want it on descent here. Start the AP on the approach. No, I won't bother that. Oh, PTU goes on in descent as well. There we are. You want it to TA once you finish descending? Okay. Do you not land using QFE anymore, said Rory? Uh, no, I'm not on uh, commercial aviation. The military use QFE quite a bit. So I'm just sort of not so worried now about CDAs. I uh, just need to be at 6,000, because look, we've got to be level at 6,000 feet for at least 4 miles anyway. So I'll just get down to 6,000 feet now. You land with sink on. Lots of differing opinions. Battle number three of the water zone. There's the Thames estuary ahead. There's a super add on. Oh, look at that wind farm down there. I remember seeing that on the test sector. It's very, very nice, this sim. We need some gnarly weather though. Should have done the stream yesterday. Hi Rosex, it's today's my birthday and I'm uh, exam today so there's no better way to end up watching you and melting in the sea. Well happy birthday, thank you very much for popping in during your uh, studies. God, I would not want to be studying in this heat today. Ugh, no way. Oh yeah, better just drop down here, just be break. Gotta be at 6,000 feet in 4 miles. God, this, this is just... You need to get down, no problem at all. I've already gone into outer quiet. Look. Yeah, I need to uh, increase the null zone on my speed brake. So maintain 6,000 till gang P, then down to 4,000 feet. He's armed. Look at that, 6,000 bang on. Just 
going to maintain 220. I know it's a tad fast. There is the Thames Estuary straight ahead. It's done a good job levelling off at 6,100 feet. Why not 6,000? That's what my instructor used to say. Oh, you're very good at uh, maintaining altitude. It's a shame it's 100 feet high. <laughs> Sorry, initial. There we go. I've just updated it to 6,000. So again, 6,000 now down to 4,000 at Lima Charlie Echo 07 in one mile. So we can set that now. 4,000 feet. Out arm. I'll just use IS hold. That way it'll hold the speed nicely for me. 220 knots. We've got 9.4. 12, 12 12.7, about 13 miles. Such a beast. Oh, I can't wait to find the average. Oh, right, no, it's starting to send a bit more thrust off. Pop into Mike Charlie for some jellied eels. Ugh. Is that Manston, Dave? Four thousand, three thousand, not long to go, guys. I need the post cruise chase night, lights are on yet. Golden Sun and uh traffic uh orange five Yankees very coming. So on on that sim. EGMC is soft, I don't know where that is, Dave. It'll be City there, won't it? Shame there's no ATC. I mean, it's the time of day I'm streaming. It's, you know, it is extremely hot. <laughs> Wouldn't blame anyone not doing controlling, not uh, controlling today. It is meant to cool down next week. I accidentally uh, bugged the wrong speed there, 220.01. So 4,000 feet need to be level. Uh, oh, I'm nice and low on this one. Still 1.8 plus about 3 miles. So I'll add thrust. The aircraft's going to pitch to up to maintain 220. Aircraft's done a fine job navigating so far. And down to 3,000 feet at Osvev, and then we're going to start configuring here downwind with the flaps. Looking good. Uh, see, I found it. TMS should deactivate 200. Above, but it doesn't, that's why the TMS disconnect the frontal handle button is for as well. Ah, is that the button there that disconnects it? Oh! I forgot to mention, yeah, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 being controlled by my thrust levers. Now we are 4,000 feet. Again, I'm just going to maintain 220. Go down to 3,000 feet now. Arm. Indicated airspeed hold again. It's just indicated airspeed is a nice descent mode. It, it lowers your workload a little bit on an aircraft with no auto throttle. You don't have to worry about the speed. The aircraft's going to pitch for the speed for you. If you've got an auto throttle, you can use VS. But VS in an aircraft like this, you've got to think about the vertical speed and your auto throttle as well to maintain your speed. Oh, there, that's the go around button. I won't press that unless I go around then, which is likely today. Right, max 210, right. And once we get to 3,000 feet, we're going to start configuring. I'm going to reduce to 185. There's City. No bogus today, because I can't see it, Microsoft Flight Sim. 
And let's absolutely smash it down. It's approaching 3,000 feet Osfem. We've complied with every restriction. We've not missed any yet. Now we're going to slow down to about uh, 180 knots when we're downwind here. So we're going to keep the thrusters idle. There's out hold, 3,000 feet with one mile to go, max 185. So it should tell us to start extending flaps now. There's the right turn. We can now go down to. Oh no, we've got to maintain 3,000 feet. So hopefully it'll tell me to select flap one in a second. It's levelled off 100 feet high again, look. Speed checked below 205, select flaps 18. So flap 18, not flap one, sorry. So I've selected that. You can hear the increased noise from the flaps. Love that sound. So we're going to maintain 180. Why is it ballooning up to 3,200? What have I done? What's going on? Why has it done that? We need to go down to 2,000 feet now anyway. So 2,000 feet. And I'm going to use vertical speed with the sync pitch feature. So sync. I'm going to pitch down to 1,000 feet. It's getting a bit low. Ooh, that's going to make it's going to bring your dinner up and sync off. Arm 2000. Yeah, it was on our hold 3000 there. Needs to be at 2000 in 5 miles. So 180 knots, speed's held well. Ooh. There's the shard. And there's City. Oh, it's going to be a lovely approach, isn't it? 2500. Speed check below 205. Select gear down. Oh, a bit early for gear down. I'll select that when we are approaching Toby. Look, so this is Microsoft, look at Microsoft Flight Sim Turbulence. No, I'm not making any input here at all, look. It's just up and down. I don't know if it's trying to replicate thermals or something. Which, to be fair, there'd be a lot of today. It, it, the weather is perfect. It, it's absolutely perfect. Cav OK. Don't level off at 2100 again. Get up on. <laughs> can I change that to 1014? So there's 2000 feet, max 185. I'm going to drop the gear down soon and then we're going to drop the flap as well. To flap 24. That's going to be annoying for the residents, all the traffic coming into city at 2,000 feet. Not in the whisper jet, though. Cheers, Henry. 16 months local report meteor leaving crater and runway. Port <laughs> Forward is confirmed it's just that a flight in Sim City landing. I'm not going to rise to the baits. Thank you. Right, we're downwind, so I'm going to drop the gear now. Speed check to below 180. Select flaps 24. And I'm going to bug 160. We're going to have a lot of thrust now. 1 I found is it, it, took, it doesn't put you onto a 10 mile final, you see. It's very early, so we're going to have a lot of thrust here just to maintain 160 knots. And we'll select the landing flap uh, just before glide slope capture. It's not the most efficient, and it probably wasn't the correct procedure for 09, but really caught me out yesterday. I'm probably a tad early here, yeah, well, I'm four miles from Toby. Oh well. Sim looks really good, doesn't it? For your, for your information, click the speed flip chart, set the bugs if you do not know. I know that one, Astrid, you. I can press it now, but the problem is it's going to bug once, get rid of my 160 bug. There you are. So I just want to bug 160 again, and then when I get landing flap, I'll, I'll select it again to get a bit low on speed here. Very dirty, and we're going to maintain 2,000 feet now all the way until glide slope back capture. Just a little early with the gear and flaps there. Should have probably configured gear here just after top B. 
Holding the speed nicely. 1.8 miles the turn. The older pipe's doing its best to maintain 2,000 feet. I love how you just nose down and dive into the city. It's very disconcerting. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> It's the cool approach, isn't it, on to zero 09? Right, there we are, turning towards Oddleg. Speed's good, 160 knots. Burning a lot of gas here, but we've still got plenty of fuel. Took an extra 30 minutes. Watch the speed of the turn. And after Oddleg, and the right turn onto the ILS. Do I have to go out of RNAV mode? to uh, get the ILS to work. Yeah, thank you, Ravage. Yeah. <laughs> Answer my question. So what I'll do, as soon as it gets to Oddleg and it turns right, I'll go I'll go to Heading Select. So I'm to make loads of changes for us to keep the speed of 160 here. So I'm going to get ready for Heading Select. And then switch off Nav Mode as well. Oof. There we are, so heading select, off with our nav, and we'll arm lo localizer. Localizer armed. There we are. Six miles to go from landing, guys. So I'm going to select landing flat. This is going to happen very quickly now. 30. Update the V speeds. Start slowing down. And landing flat as well. We're on a six mile final already. Localizer captured. Turn, 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 turn. Funny enough, at some airports we fly into, some really tricky approaches, we um, fully configure before uh, glide slope capture. And I'm in approach now. Glide slope mile. Right, that's done a nice turn onto final. We're, we're still, we're still uh, very low, but this is exactly how they would approached. Glide slope capture is like within four miles. It's crazy. Right, landing checklist. So we've got full flaps out. We're already at our final approach speeds. We'll use the speed brake on final to maintain the speed. Speed is set. Oh come on! It's oh, it's all over. Just keep that speed. There, there's the Millennium Dome. Glide slope alive. Landing recorder fakes. Oh my god, this is multitasking. Where is it? Ah! <laughs> Thanks. Check. Thank you. Missed approach attitude. It's 2,000 feet. Thanks. Speed break out. Flight recorder's on. And I'm just. I've got the speed break out and I'm just managing the speed. Final approach speed set. Ah, uh, I'm trying to find the missed approach. Oh! Mr. Approach attitude is 2,000 feet, which is already set. Right, I think we're good now. Speed brakes are already out. Look, just to maintain the speed, I've got a bit of this rust up as well. We're looking good here. And remember, we need to do about 1,200 feet per minute to stay on this approach. Right, music's off. And, uh, well, let's have some fun. Disconnecting. Autopilot disconnected. Right. On speed, on glide, tad high. It, it flies beautifully, this, this add-on. Speed's perfect. Two reds, two whites, just keep it going all the way down, checked. Oh yeah, um, uh, city traffic, out back to Lima Charlie, final zero 09. I keep forgetting offline. Right, three reds, <coughs> tad low, two reds, two whites, back on profile, keep descending, speed's good. Take a little bit of thrust off. Checked. Two reds, two reds checked. Three reds, a little bit low. Just Minimum. rest that rate of saying continue, Minimum. continue. <laughs> Tad low again. A little bit fast. Keep descending now. Ooh, a little high there. Flare about 50 feet. 50, 40, 30, check, 20, close. 10. That looks good. Speed breaks up. And yeah. there's. 
Spoilers are out. Manual braking. Great pressure seat. That was good. I think that was a nice one. I'm pretty happy that it, it flies so nicely and in the flare. I'm braking and all brakes as well. Well, that was all right. What was it? I think we were a minus 60 knots. 250 or something. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to London City. We'll take the first right. There we go. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> Well, that went better than the test sectors. Right, stowing the speed brake. Great approach. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, just wheel brakes, the big speed brake up as well. Very nice. That was very anticlimactic. I was expecting something to go horribly wrong, but it uh, all went very well in the end. Brilliant. Welcome to London City. And this is the brand new Orbex V2 update scenery. So you've got the brand new taxiway here, so you can actually... Am I actually on the taxi line, or... Yeah, I am. Um, you can actually taxi and vacate. You don't have to backtrack. Oh, look at look at the graphics. Looks the the capital in the background there. Absolutely wonderful. Well, I enjoyed that. I've just logged off now. Uh, that's it. There's no ATC. Brilliant. Don't ever need to take her for maintenance. No, that was good. minus one fifty one. Well, that would have been a great landing on the butter calculator. And I've got the replay going as well, so we can have a look at that. So let me just do the clean up. So flaps coming up. What a lovely little add-on. Yeah, great fun. The only thing that went really badly was takeoff, where <laughs> I think I think the main gear might be a little green in places. Oh dear. Right, let me do the clean up on the checklist here. So, taxiing after landing. So lights come off, put the taxi lights on. There we are. Uh, get the APU started. Strobes can come off, which are back here. We'll take a stand here in front of the terminal. I don't think any 146s are left now going into city. I might be wrong. Oh, I forgot to turn the TMS off. Sorry, guys. There's a lot going on there. It's off now. We'll have a little look at this scenery as well. Take the next left here. Oh, maybe not. I was going a little bit too fast. Let's go right in this corner here. Stand 21. Yeah, I need to change the, the speed brake noise here. That was a great little flight, though. To, oh, so when to start the turn, look, based off your aircraft type. That's good. Oh, <laughs> right under Jim's chin. Oh, I've, over, I've overcooked this. Oh, yeah, I overcooked that. Not as good as the other time. In the 7-3. Fine, we'll just go left of the line slightly. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Perfect. Not not bad. Just just about a metre too far to the left. There we are. We're on stand now anyway. Right, parking brake is set. Uh, APU should be up and available. APU is available. I think APU power is already on. You never actually turn it off. So I think... Where's APU, boss? Oh, so many switches! I think, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Let's just shut the edge down and see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to London City. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. There we are. I don't think we've lost AC power, have we? No, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, after landing, we've done. Shut down secure so taxi lights can come off. Uh, hold the hydraulic. I won't do this because we're going to do the replay, but Jenny's come off, the hydraulic's come off, thrust levers fuel off, I've done. Fasten seatbelt sign to off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to City. Uh, turn off lights. Fuel pumps off. The rest is just a full shutdown checklist, but there we go. Excellent! Gen switch automatically indeed. Very Airbus. Very, very Airbus. Oh, that was a really nice flight. Anti coals. Someone will comment on that before we have a look around. Uh, there we are, beacon light off. Brilliant. Very, very enjoyable. Uh, well, this isn't the first time we've been here. We've been here probably four or five times before, but uh, who doesn't like coming into London City? But uh, yeah, uh, I've had the Orbex scenery in the past. This is the new V2 update, which I think was updated a month or two ago. But it's got the brand new taxiway, which was added to the airport in the last few years. It's now fully modelled, and well, obviously, with Microsoft Flight Simulator, it looks absolutely stunning. There's the Millennium Dome and downtown there as well. I think I flew the approach quite nicely. Just configured a little bit too early. I was a bit conservative uh, with the gear and flaps, but that's not a bad thing. You can hear the, the water as well. Looking very nice. 
Uh, three to eight in Microsoft Flight Sim would be good. What's the three to eight unified uh, memory? I don't know. Uh, you forgot the cabin call on finals. Insecure cabin landing. Oh, oh, do one. <laughs> Jim did it. You weren't. You didn't notice. Very, very nice. I think one of the terminals is modelled. But correct me if I'm wrong. Not here. No. I don't know city at all. No, maybe I'm, I'm wrong in thinking it was modelled somewhere, or something's modelled. Where's the front door here? So I'm just enjoying drone cam here, it's, it's around here. Oh, that's, yeah, remember there's no tower here guys, it's an unmanned tower. I think this is the camera for the unmanned tower. They have this in Menorca, Mahon. So you see that there? That's remote air traffic control. So that it's not a miniaturised ATC tower, but they use that to be able to see what's going on, and the ATC is actually stationed miles away. Very, very cool. But yeah, they have that in Menorca. I saw it in Menorca, and the FO and I were like, what's that? And we're like, oh, I think it's one of those... Uh... Oh, what's happened to my Xbox controller? Oh, there we go. Um, what's that? And was like, oh, it's one of those remote ATCs. what the dispatcher told us, which is pretty cool. And there is the 146. Got to here safely. Just about, although we did nearly have a runway excursion on takeoff. Um, brilliant! Well, I think we'll do a little replay as I'm absolutely melting here. I hope you enjoyed the stream as well. Nice to revisit City again. We'll have to, when the Avra comes out, we'll have to jump back into that and do a two sector or something. But um, yeah, it was great fun to, to jump into this. I've been wanting to do it for a while. Uh, anyway, we'll do that here. Catch up in chat here. Autopilot flight director go around mode is engaged by pressing the autopilot disconnect button twice. The button on the throttles disconnects the TMS, which also tells you the go around M1 off to try and remember that. What is this? A tough and brilliant Aaron. Cheers, Rob H. Glad you enjoyed the stream. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, yeah, Jen, hydraulics you'll need for the SS, correct. Um, it took a little bit of a while, but uh, what a job. Yeah, really nice. Uh, very nice. I don't think there's any other add ons that have uh, the taxiway with City. Uh, cheers, Supersonic Nigel. Thank you very much as well. Cheers, Uros as well. Thank you very much for your donation too. Uh, right then, so bear with me. I'll just make sure we've definitely logged off of that sim which we have. Uh, what I'm going to quickly do is jump into the cockpit, uh, load up the panel state for landing for the replay. Uh, so aircraft panel state. I think it's just ready for takeoff. Ready for takeoff selected. I <laughs> love that voice. I'll whack out the flaps. I think it just takes a while for it just to sort of spin up. Ah, what? Oh no, that's not good. Oh, I'll just try that, see what happens. So, oh, I'm still replaying. Uh, cue the funky replay music. Wish me luck here. I just, can't, I cannot do it flawlessly and smoothly in this sim. Oh, that is very loud. Oh, I've deafened everyone here. Right. Oh, I think it's doing it too. Very, very good. Get out, get out, get out. <laughs> there we go. Right, let's have a little look. From this perspective here. I just want to see what the landing looked like. So just pause the replay. They move. It's, it's just the replay doing its thing here. So it looks like three reds because we're a bit low. It's good headwind on final here. Oh, yeah. oh, come on! <laughs> the tire squeal. Oh, I love it. That was a, that was that was a butter, not bust. I love all these tire squeal noises. I noticed this when I was te doing the test sector here. Let me just do that again. So funny. Yeah, butter or bust, guys. That uh, speed brake really helps as well. Right, now, one of my members, Kieran, has explained to me, I'll try to do this quickly, how to set up a, a replay like it's an X-Plane 12, but, so bear with me, let me let me just try this again. The thing is, it takes so long to do, and I've not actually done it, so what I need to do, this should be worth it if you enjoy replays, of 
note these instructions so you can do it as well. And I need to find this chap, Kieran. Right. This, this is a real... Right, so what I need to do is get to where it touches down. Press pause. Like a donkey. Right, so press pause. Now, where we've touched down. Right, you now need... <laughs> This is why I like Explain Replay so much more, because this is a ride pain in the ass. So you go to Showcase, Drone View, uh, Reset View first. Right, I've done that. Reposition the camera to where you want it to be. So, so, so about there. Okay. Alright. Drone lock off. Which I've done. Final justice, drone lock on. Follow mode on. Oh, follow off. There we are. Right, let's see if this worked. Yeah, look, you can do it like it's in. You can do it like it's in X Blade, but it only takes about two minutes. <laughs> there you go. Oh, follow mode on, don't I? Oh yes. It works, it works, and it's just a bit <laughs> clicky, that's all. I, I do one more, just because the amount of effort it took to, to set that up. Right, let me do one more here. The problem is in the replay, the sounds go all funny. Oh, that's an iconic shot, look at that. I can't zoom out. <laughs> there we are. Beautiful. Please close the camera window. Sorry, sorry, Ashton Dream. If you've not altered your body, then it's insert to drone and you can hit to toggle follow mode. Ah, oh, I've, I've done something. I've done something, I think, wrong with that. Right, let me let me reset everything now. Whee! And I'll just do the the classic uh, out the window view. There we are. That's, I think, the one we want to want to see, London. Uh, right, let me put you back here, the replay. And if it gives just before glide slope capture, what can we see there? Which view do we want? Oh no, we want the right hand side, don't we, with the Millennium Dome. Yes, it is right hand side. Oh, but the problem is I'm I didn't do enough replay. Oh well. Battle there. Alright then guys, let me resume replay. Boof! There we go. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the live stream. Great to jump back into the BA16. It's from Just Flight. Go check it out on their website. So it's an excellent add-on. And one of the best actually in Microsoft Flight Sim. What uh, doesn't receive enough love from me. So we'll fly it again, hopefully not in uh, a year's time, we'll fly again soon, if not the Avro when it's released, uh, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future. Uh, thanks to everyone that donated, uh, thank you very much for uh, everyone's um, subscription as well, <laughs> subscribe, it helps the comment, and membership, that's what I was looking for. Thanks to all the members for your continued support, really appreciate it. Uh, that's it, back at work, a full five days, so you won't see much there. Follow me on social media if you want to uh, see the occasional picture I uh, put on the story from work and stuff as well. Uh, guys, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you on another live stream very soon. Oh, look, there's Millennium Dome. Bye!